And welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh. Uh, first of all, good news, good news, good news. Our young friend, Jacob Wolf, will be back on the podcast next week. Hey! So this will be the last time that I have to stare at myself and talk for an hour. It's weirder than you think. I don't know how people do it when you're just looking at yourself talking. It's hard not to, like, pick. Yeah, anyways. So I'm happy that that's going to happen. First of all, thank you all so much to the people in Des Moines who came out this week. Man, what a week of shows. And with Lee Syatt, so much fun. We're having so much fun out on the road. These shows are straight fire, everybody. So if you are coming, uh, if I'm coming to your area, definitely come out and see the shows. I have... I'm reinvigorated and I have rediscovered some things on stage that I am fucking absolutely loving. So uh, let's go. Let's go. Also, we accidentally stumbled on a uh, controversy that I want to get into right now because I didn't even think it was controversial, but apparently it is. I never thought there was even a discussion about this, but people have lost their minds on it. And let me just make it clear once and for all. The question was, is chocolate candy or is it separate from candy? And let me just say unequivocally, did I use that right? I did. You're welcome, everybody. I said it real slow. Uh, <laughs> cause I thought I was going to mess it up, but unequivocally guys, chocolate is separate from candy. Now there is chocolate candy. M&M is a chocolate candy, but there are candy bars, Snickers, three musketeers, a, a, a Butterfinger, and there are chocolate bars that just say chocolate bar on it. It is, chocolate is not a, you can have chocolate candy, yes. But there is, it is separate, it is a separate thing. Yo, where I shop, it says candy and then chocolate. Two separate things. Skittles, candy. M&M's, chocolate candy. Because it's chocolate with a, it says it, candied shell. Candied shell. Chocolate with a candied shell. It is a chocolate candy. Those two things can exist. But it is separate, everybody. Unquestionably separate. Because you can just, you pick it up. If it's a chocolate bar, it says chocolate bar. Because it's just chocolate. No candy. I don't, I don't even know how we, and there are candy bars. People are like, oh yeah, dude, just read it. It says candy bar. You're right. There, is, there, are, there are candy bars because a Snickers has caramel, nougat, nut, and chocolate. Candy bar. An M&M, ha, a peanut M&M has peanuts, chocolate, candy shell. Candy. Yo, dude, when you go and you get a 78% dark chocolate bar, it is chocolate. It doesn't say Doc Chocolate Candy Bar. It doesn't. There's no discussion about this. They are two separate things. Chocolate, it comes from a, like, cacao. Cacao! Which sounds like the noise they made in Three Amigos. And for those of you who don't get that reference, get your shit together and go watch Three Amigos. A Just a genuinely hilarious movie. Even you're like, these three dudes, this is an old movie. Yes. Three Amigos still holds up. It is such a ridiculous movie. There are a couple for you people who are younger that you should see. Let me just jump out of Chocolate vs. Candy for a second. Yo, Three Amigos holds up. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Guys, if you haven't seen Planes, Trains, if you're not familiar with John Candy, 
get into that. That is that dude is pure genius comedy. So I would say three. This is off the top of my head now, because I'll I'll, I'll tell you some movies that don't hold up. Animal House. It doesn't hold up. It's it was a different time. That was that stuff was crazy back then. I don't know how much, and this is some people are gonna hate me for this. I don't know how much John Belushi holds up now. Cause he was kind of zany and crazy for the time. But now you're like, yeah, dude, I see that guy on my TikTok feed all the time. But he's eating scorpions and sticking hot dogs in his butthole. Like that the crazy dude, right? So I'm not diminishing John Belushi, but I just don't know how much what he was doing on SNL or the zaniness holds up. Like, but, and I would tell you also, if you haven't seen Tommy Boy, Chris Farley holds up. That shit holds up to today. I'm just going to give you those three. Tommy Boy, go watch it. Planes, Trains, go fucking watch it. Three Amigos, I would say out of the three would be the last one. To watch, but but if you're not familiar with the first two, go go do it. Go do it. Back to chocolate and candy. Things like Skittles. When you, if I said to you, "Hey man, get me some candy," and you brought me back a chocolate bar, I'd be like, "Hey, fuck you. Where's the candy?" There is such a huge difference. And somebody said to me on Halloween, on Halloween when you go out and get candy, right? So whatever gets put in the bag is candy. Okay, cool. Sometimes people put pencils in there. Some people put apples. Apples. Is apple now a candy because someone dropped it in your bag on Halloween? Somebody said to me, yeah, but at the movie theater, you just go up to the counter, you get candy. So anything at the counter is candy. Okay, so popcorn is candy now? Is that what you're telling me? The nachos they sell back there are candy? No, dude. There is candy. There is chocolate. It's not even, I don't, I don't understand how we can even be discussing it. When you, when the simple proof is just go get a chocolate bar and it says chocolate bar. And then the other stuff is in a candy aisle. So like, Matt, where are you at with this? I mean, am I wrong on the distinction between the two? Cause you can have chocolate candies, but chocolate is chocolate and candy is candy. Well, I think if there's a delineate delineation between ingredients because yeah. candy is sugar essentially yes and chocolate is its own like material yes um I, i'd be interested to know like where are you with like you know like like a chocolate that has like a uh, nuts or some type of rice crispy thing or something in it does that count as candy well that then now you're talking about nestle crunch yeah that is candy it's got something else in it and and probably added sugar i would even go as far to say if you wanted to tell me milk chocolate was a candy, I would allow it. Like a Hershey, I, I wouldn't. like a Hershey's bar, I would understand. But I still think it's a chocolate bar. It's chocolate. That's it. It's chocolate. It doesn't have anything else in it. Cho I, mean, I mean, chocolate's derived from the cacao. Yeah, cacao. Cacao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, Matt, I've never heard you do a voice. I do. Uh, when you were talking about... Um, uh, three amigos. I was just like, Caw. yeah, it's <laughs> super fun. Like you can tell it's a male plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, guys, I, I don't know how we can describe it any better than we have. There is just a separation between the two. Now Lee's argument to me and Lee, if you don't know what Lee looks like, Lee's a little shorter than me at one time was probably 340 pounds and probably five, four. And still, he, he considered, he just self described as a short, chubby dude. So, his argument to me is who knows more about food? I don't think that's a great argument that you eat anything so you think you know more about food. I actually would argue the other side. I'm more discerning about what I put in my body. So, I don't eat the candy, but I will eat a chocolate bar. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? So listen, guys, I, I, I want to know where you lie on this, but this is how I would break it down. And I'm not saying you're wrong. If you disagree, I'm just saying you're not right, is what I'm saying. Hit me up with where you fall on that. Now, after this, first of all, guys, by, by the way, I spent last week in New York, did a couple of podcasts, which were a ton of fun. 
Um, and uh, also, I want to tell you something life changing. First, I after the week in in New York, and by the way, I sp- I, I did a Wednesday night show at the small place in New Jersey. I don't know where the dojo is, Mount something, New Jersey. Yo, on the same lineup, Louis C.K., Joey Diaz. Now, I, I, Rich Voss and I were on the lineup too, but I don't put either one of us even close. But this was a $30 ticket with 100 people in the room for a lineup that included Joey Diaz and Louis C.K. Now, I want to tell you something about both those dudes. First of all, I am admittedly not familiar with Louis' comedy for this reason. I, a long time ago, knew that he and I were both talking about our kids in non-traditional ways. So I never wanted to listen to his material because I never wanted, he was already more famous than me. And I never wanted something to happen in my life where I was like, well, I can't fucking talk about that. I heard Louie talk about it. So I, 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 on purpose, him and, I've said this before, him and Bert. I just never listened to anybody who was talking about their kids because it was something that I'd never wanted to bump up against where it would bother me. But I watched him work out material and man, and he still had his notepad out and, um, you know, he's not a dude who raises his voice, who gets you in on theatrics or uses any tricks performatively it's all his writing it it and whatever you want to say about whatever in louis and i'm not going to comment on that but as a stand up yo i was watching how he crafted jokes and working on material he's he, and and a reminder to me that you can always dig deeper You can always go one step further. You can always push the envelope completely off the table. And it was very inspirational for me as a stand-up and as an artist, more importantly, to watch. But I'm going to tell you something right now, everybody. And Joey Diaz and I, you guys, if you don't know, he and I go back years. We started at the same time in in, uh, Seattle. He used to live in my backyard. Not like in the yard. We had a a, a little house back there that he lived in. Um, but so you guys know he's you know he used to watch my kid babysit my kids and we have a long history. But I I've said this before and I'll say it again now after watching him this past week. There's what all of us do, man. And there's all you can be like, oh, this guy's my favorite. This guy makes you know some people may be like, yeah, dude, you're. And I've heard this before. This is so flattering. You're my favorite comic. And knowing who else is out there, Bill Burr, Louis C.K., you you know, uh, uh, whoever you may like, Taylor Tomlinson, whatever your cup of tea might be. It's super flattering. But I would say all of us are in a similar bubble. Although for me, I put guys like Burr and Ron White and guys that make me laugh more in the center of like, oh, my fuck, right? But to me, we're all in the same bubble, right? Some of us a little further out, but kind of doing the same thing. So there's all of us, and there is, on the outside of the bubble, in a completely different weight class, Joey Diaz. Guys, he gets a level of laughter that I I don't, if you haven't seen him, I don't think you can quite understand. When he taps in and he goes on one of his rants and he's, he's, he, that anger is bubbling and the veins on his neck are sticking out and it looks like his fucking head's going to pop off his shoulders. There is nobody on planet Earth who can do what he does. Zero people that I've seen anyway. Zero people who, yo, there are zero people who make everyone leave the green room to come out and watch. 
Every single one of us. And let me tell you the best thing about him. Okay. First of all, besides the fact, and, and like zero fucks about what you think about him. Zero, zero fucks. This is how I talk. This is what I say. These are the words I say. These are how I say them and fuck off. And very few people are offended by what he says because there is a, the, uh, he's so authentic, dude. This is the thing about the art. He's so authentic that you're like, that's, he's not doing this to shock me. This is just who the fuck he is. This is how he grew up. This is what he thinks. Okay. But to have everybody leave the green room to come out and watch this dude do his set. That is not what happens with most comics. That it, it just isn't. It was so crazy to watch him do it and to talk to him afterwards. And so I left that show like, oh, fuck. Oh, I, I, there have been some things, man, there I'm like, nah, I'm not going to talk about that. Nah, I'm not going to, because I, mm, here's the thing. I, I am now, and I wrote a bunch of jokes this weekend that will fit into stories, but I am now not going to censor thoughts and ideas. But I am going to, because I was like, oh, I don't want to, or maybe I shouldn't, right? But I ha I thought to myself, yo, dude, you're going to get those ideas and thoughts across how you do them. I am not a divisive dude, but I can still talk about things that make people uncomfortable. But I want to make people comfortably uncomfortable. That is my lane. I want to talk to you about things that we're all thinking, but in a comfortably uncomfortable way where I, where it's not divisive, but it's look you can poke at people and make fun. And I think everybody is fair game. I disagree a hundred percent that there should be some people that you can't make fun of because you're a white guy or what I disagree a thousand percent on that. But to me, there's a way to do it. And there, and, and that's the way I like to do it in an arms wide open. You have to look at everybody's intent. Am I trying to be hateful? Am, is one word going to throw you off without you listening to how I'm delivering a joke? That's your problem. Uh, from here on out, I just have to remember who the fuck I am. And I'm not, I'm trying to make everyone laugh at the same thing at each other. To me, that is inclusive, man. To me, what's inclusive is we all poke fun at each other in a fun way. We're all in the same locker room. Uh, you know, dude, if you've ever been in a group, right, with people with different makeups, but you're all in the same locker room together, you get, you poke fun at each other, right? But it's, it's what, what bothers you is when somebody outside of the group comes in and goes, but it's like somebody, you and your family. Yeah, I can talk to my brother in any way I want. But when somebody outside the group comes in, you're like, hey, fuck you, dude. I, like, I make fun of my kids all the time. But when somebody else makes fun of them, I'm like, take it fucking easy. But the truth is, if we can all look at it as, yo, there are a bunch of us who, and I include you all, because I read the comments, I hear what you say to me. There are a bunch of us who are really want to just get back to goofing on each other. And that a certain topic isn't going to be what turns me off. It's how do you talk about it? Are you, are you legitimately trying to insult somebody or are we making fun? Remember, if you're going to celebrate this year and celebrate over the holidays and you're not somebody who is back on and, or drinking, that best day brew is the best way to do it. I'm telling you right now, if you like to taste a beer, but you try not to have any alcohol, this beer is fucking fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Just judging by the people who've come up to me at shows, there are a lot of sober people who listen to this podcast. So if you're out there and you're drinking some of the other NAs, you're missing out. Jump into this best day brew, guys. It is, the ingredients are great. The dude who runs it, Jim, is a good dude. Like I said, he's kept it a small business, but is growing like crazy. He's not selling it off to one of the big conglomerates because he's keeping everything 
and his ingredients and the distribution, pure and simple and small. I like to support small businesses like this. I know you guys do too. Best Day Brew guys. So delicious. Go out, grab yourself one, grab yourself a six pack, grab yourself a 12 pack. Let's support this dude and what he's trying to do. Best Day Brew, delicious. Matt, can I tell you what happened in Iowa this weekend? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This blew me away. So guys, I tell a story right now. And um, I don't want to give away the story. How do I do it without giving away? I, I tell the story right now about being on stage. And this is a story about something that happened to me. And um, having uh, somebody uh, uh, who was retarded in the crowd. Right? And I tell a story about how it happened. And, um, I've had people been like, just that word turns them off right away. Now, if you haven't heard the story, everybody, it's a non-offensive, it's only offended if you want to be offended by the word. But I, I, I tell the story, I wish I could tell you the whole thing, but again, I don't want to ruin the joke because the joke's going to end up on a special and also... Sometimes people get mad when I tell a story on the podcast, if I find a story and then I end up telling it on stage, someone's like, well, I heard that story already. I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't just tell them once and throw them away. That's not how it works. But so dude, I tell this story, right? And in it, 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 look, man, people are laughing. We're all having a good time. And somebody gets up. And storms out of the room. And I go, oh, where are you going? And she goes, I'm not listening to this. And I said, oh, okay. She goes, I can't sit here and you li- li- hear you listen. I can't sit here and listen to you tell that story. And she screams. The last thing you hear when she before she leaves the room is, I have a retard at my house. And I was like, what? you think that's less offensive than what I just said? I have. I was just like, the whole place. Because if you listen to my story, you know how non-offensive it is. But what she said was like crazy to everybody. And the place fucking, there was a lot, there was a pause. And then there was a blow up of laughter. Because what? What did you just say? It was so ridiculous. You heard a word in a joke and didn't listen to anything else after it. And then you said something so much worse. I have one? What? So bananas. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, when you have these situations where people get offended at your shows, what's the ratio of men offended to women offended? Like, are there more women who get offended by your jokes than dudes? It's a very interesting question. I had some people in Sacramento walk out because of the joke. And I'll tell you something, guys. If you hear the word and get offended, if you stick around till the end of the joke, nobody's ever offended. Is all I'll tell you, okay? It's always a man and a woman. It's a couple. And I don't know whose impetus it is to leave, but it's always, anytime anyone's been offended, it's been a couple. Uh, I'm assuming husband and wife. And and, and like I said, man, and I'll go one step further on this. I'm not, I'm totally okay with people being offended. It's up, it's your choice. I I, I believe 100% being offended is your choice. Nobody makes you be offended. Like nobody can make you be sad. These are all your choices. Nobody, nobody, the reason why you are nobody can make you be offended that it's your choice because there's not one thing that universally is offensive to everybody. Right? So it's clearly your choice. You're, it's something is happening that you're choosing. It, 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 and again, no judgment, man. No judgment at all. But you also shouldn't judge people who don't find it offensive. In the same way that I'm not I don't know what happened to you in your life. I don't know. 
I don't know why this particular thing gets to you. I don't know. It's none of my business. You get to decide what you want to decide, but you don't also get to decide for other people what, what, what is offensive and what isn't that that's, that's where I come in and draw the line. Guys, look, I'll give you a great example. I hear all the time when I tell people I'm Jewish, they go, Oh, you don't look Jewish. Now people have said that to me in front of other Jews and other Jews are like, can you believe what he said? I'm like, yeah, dude, I take that exactly how it was intended as a compliment. That means I don't look like you ugly Jews. Like, I don't look like, I don't have the nose like a hawk. I don't look like a tired goblin, you know? Like, that is basically, yeah, I don't look like the ugly Jews. You're telling me I don't look like Larry King. I appreciate it. You're telling me I don't look like Jerry Seinfeld. Very cool. Woody Allen. Don't want to look like any of those dudes. So thank you for the compliment. But the rest of the Jews, I want you to know, who fit into that category could be offended. But I don't, listen, man, I don't, I choose not to be offended by that stuff. Now, I've heard Holocaust jokes, dude. And, and am I offended? I'm offended by the ones that aren't funny is what I'm offended by. Do I understand that some people tell them with an intent of hate? Yep. And I'm not offended by that, but I know, hey, this is somebody I don't need to hang out with. That's how I take it. I'm not offended, but I do take note that this is probably somebody that I don't want to listen to or hang out with, you know? But I, I also at this point, if you go to a comedy show and get offended by something, you haven't done your research on the comedy. You haven't. You ha there's, there's plenty of stuff out there, guys, where you're like, oh, oh yeah, I probably... I probably, if you go to a Tony Hinchcliffe show and you're offended, that is your fucking fault. You have never, that means you've never Googled Tony Hinchcliffe, right? So this is all I'm saying, guys. We, we, it's such a weird time where we're, we're also offended that other people don't think like us. Oh, how dare you don't, you don't think that that, you know, we need to get over that shit. It's such a weird time. You know what else? Speaking of jokes. It's a weird gotcha comedy police time. I got another message on Instagram yesterday uh, telling me that Burt Kreischer is stealing my material. Guys, 1,000% Burt Kreischer is not stealing. I don't even know the joke that the person is talking about. 1,000% Burt Kreischer is not stealing my material. Somebody has sent me that before and I took a look into it and I was like, guys, it was a similar situation. And it was a unique situation, but similar. But guess what? It's like somebody sent me once, Chad Daniels stealing your material. And they sent me a link. And it was a story about Chad finding porn on his son's computer. Guys, we are parents with kids. If you are a parent with a teenage son, and you're looking on his computer, you know what you're going to find? A thousand percent porn. A thousand percent chance. And if you're a comic who talks about your kids, you're going to talk about it. And probably, and I, I didn't watch the whole Chad's bit, but I bet you his son denied it a little bit. Just like mine did. Because they're teenage boys who aren't going to be like, yeah, I'm jerking off to porn on the computer. That's not the answer they're going to get. That's not the joke, right? With Bert, similar. I would tell you this about, and one of the reasons I never really watched his material. By the way, Bert does not need to steal material from me. He's wildly successful, right? He doesn't need to be. But one of the reasons I never watched Bert is because if you just replaced weed with booze, we're not that far off. We try to have our fans and the people coming to our show have the same kind of party, fun atmosphere. We both overindulge. We're both over consumers of life and things. And we both raise kids. So I, I never, I'll tell you something crazy. Like there is an, I, I had an idea a long time ago 
um, because of my daughter. I was like, I'm going to write a script about a, a, a girl getting her period late and having a period party for her. And then before I could, before I even said it out loud anywhere, before I, I was like, hadn't even pe pen to paper, I heard a story very similar. Somebody had sent me a clip. They were like, did this happen with your daughter? And I was like, well, I'm not going to write that fucking script. We are fathers and comics who raise kids. There's going to be similar situations. What is funny to me and why it's different than it's ever been is, look, man, I bet you in the 70s and 80s, comics touched on similar stuff all the time. But there wasn't a history of it that you could click on and watch hours of material and be like, oh, this guy's material. Yo, that joke about Trump wants to build a wall to keep Mexicans out, but guess who's building the wall? I bet you there's been 7,000 different iterations of that joke because it's right there. The joke is easy. It's right there. I'm sure, pe and, and I'm sure people aren't stealing it from each other. It's just an easy premise. It's an e it, you know what? Look, man, I had a clip on here from the podcast that I was doing with Jake when Jacob was here, where I was explaining to him that gay never meant gay, right? Because in my day, it didn't. And the best way for me to explain it to him was I just that it never meant gay, it just meant gay, right? And so I, I posted it. It's got a good, like so many views. Thank you all so much. But I, I don't usually take a look at the comments. And I started to look through them and people arguing was funny. And I commented on a couple of them just to rile people up who were, some people who were like, that is offensive. You guys are so offensive to gay people. And I, my response to them was just, that's kind of gay. Just to rile people up. But then I saw some that said, uh, South Park did this better. Or in some that said, Louie talked about this 15 years ago. And accusing me of taking it from one of them, which means you would also have to accuse one of them from taking it from the other one. So either Louis stole it from South Park or South Park stole it from Louis, or we're all men from a certain generation who are comedy people. And that's the simplest way to explain it. That just gay never meant gay. It just meant gay. You know? And so like I, I, I'm so curious by the like the gotcha the gotcha generation. And we don't show each other any grace. And everything right now is so black and white. Offensive, not offensive. Right? This is offensive. Oh, is it that word makes every one word makes everything offensive without intent? We're not taking into account the rest of the set. We're not taking into account the person who's delivering it or how they're trying to get everyone to laugh, right? Just offensive. There, you've heard something similar to this, so it's stolen. It's not that people are in art have run across similar things, might have similar ideas or similar experiences, so they have similar topics, jokes, whatever. You know what I mean? There's no people. We're not showing each other any grace where it's just like this weird time where there's you're fucking right or you're fucking wrong, you know? And it's a bummer. It's a, it's a, it's a bummer that we're not just like, Hey, this is art, man. Or, Hey, this not for me. Or, Hey, I didn't like this part, but this doesn't mean you walk out of a show finger, middle fingers up fuck you. You don't know what those people go through. Yeah. Okay. We gotta be, we gotta be smarter or show more people grace or allow other ideas to infiltrate our brains or be like, I like this part and I don't like that part. But I, 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 um, it's why I'm going to start Oh, dude, and I watched the Elvis documentary and the Elvis 68 special. And between Joey Diaz and the talk I had with him after his set and the Elvis 68 special, it reminded me I just to do what I think is funny and to do it in the way that I like to do it. 
I, that's it, man. What I would, I, what I was going to say about Joe, one of the things that I liked the most about him, if he knew I was talking about him, he would hate that. He's, he'll never hear this because he doesn't listen to this podcast. And he, he's not online and watching clips because he has other things to do. But it, he doesn't, he doesn't, he, I, I think he's uncomfortable that everybody comes out of the room and watches him. I, 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 it's one of the things, there's a lot, you know, I've known him a long time, but morally, this is going to sound weird. You know, he's got a compass, uh, you know, he's not, he could have been out on the road these last four years. He has been on stage making millions of dollars. He said no to a thousand gigs and he's turned them all down and he's going back out now and trying new stuff. And, but like, yeah, dude, I, 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 I feel more me. I'm going to try some jokes tonight at my residency at Kimmel's that I think some people I'm just gonna, there's no other way but to do it, man. And, um, I'm still going to try to put them all into story form because that's how I like to deliver jokes. Yo, the Elvis 68 special documentary. One, it reminds me, if you haven't seen the documentary, it's going to make you want to watch a special. But it reminds me how, you know, little credit he got. I know he didn't write his own stuff. Uh, and he, he kind of, there's an explanation why in the, in the documentary. But that doesn't take away from the artist that this dude was and the, the, just the magnetic performer and how I don't think there's anybody been anybody since that comes close to what this guy was, but to watch him in that moment be truly who he was and how happy he was being himself was what I took away from that. How free he was being himself and how happy he was being true to himself was inspirational. It to, and so I get that from Joey also. Um, and um, I need to, I think I've been 90% that, if I'm being honest. And I need to rediscover 100% of that. I'm not going to do that forever. I'm not going to do this forever, you know? And I don't want to spend it. I'm going to have to break some bad habits, but I don't want to spend any more of my time not saying things or playing things closer to what other people would be considered the, the middle. I'm not going to, I'm not coming out and being, like I said, I'm not a roast dude, but I do like, I do think there's a place for poking fun at everybody in an arms wide open way. And if you're somebody who's like, not, nah, I don't, I refuse to let, you can't make fun of this group or you, you're not allowed to, you can make fun of everybody else, but you're not allowed to make fun of me. I, I think that's unfortunate. It, it's so weird, the lines that we draw, you know? Like, I think the line is, you're not allowed to make fun of anybody in a minority if you're in a majority, or you're not allowed to make fun of a group if they can't help it, whatever you're making fun of, right? But guys, Okay, which is why I've said this before on this podcast. By that, you should not be able to make fun of, in the same way you're not allowed to make fun of somebody with cerebral palsy because they can't help it, you should not be able to make fun of a bald guy. And a black bald guy? You better not. You fucking better not, right? Because they can't help, right? This is what I'm saying. Like The lines that we're drawing are weird. And I, I think there's a way to erase them and consider not everybody gets to be in the group because some people are hateful and some people, their intent is to really be mean or shock you. And I'm not sure I like that humor either. You can do it, but I don't like it. But for those of us who are like, let's fucking get back to arms wide open. We're all goofing on each other. Nobody is exempt from a goof. I think that is a good place for us to be. 
What do you think, Matt? I agree. Although um, people can't help being stupid. That's true. So can you not make fun of stupid people? Well, the good thing about stupid people is most of them don't know they're stupid. So they think you're talking about somebody else. That's the best part. Like stupid people are like, they're not talking about me. But those other guys, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, look, dude, here's, a, here, okay, here's a great example, man. Whenever somebody, whenever somebody like impersonates a dumb person, sometimes they do this voice, but half the time they do a Southern accent. People from the South can't help that accent. Should we not make fun of them? Should we never do the accent? Like you might be guilty of it, right? You're not allowed to do that accent. They can't help the accent. Not do it fucking there. Uh, this is a funny way to deliver a stupid line. Maybe that's not the best Southern accent. I, I was all over the place. You guys know I'm not great with accents. But it, I, I, I think we're all open to it. We should be. And don't go to a comedy club if something is going to offend you. Just don't. It, and I'm, I mean, you can. You can buy a ticket to my show. And I'm, I'm super happy that you're spending the money and coming out. But like, why do it to yourself, you know? Anyways, Matt, Thanksgiving is coming. Um, and let's do some Thanksgiving talk if we can. I will say real quick, and I've said this before, because uh, we're going to talk about some side dishes. My most hated side dish ever, ever, Ever. I don't care if it's 4th of July or Thanksgiving or wherever we are. Dude, a cold macaroni salad. Eat my dick. The worst. Now, with mayo or oil, or oil fucking gross. Nothing grosser. I would eat potato salad with raisins before I'll eat your gross macaroni salad. But right now, we want to get into the top 10 most unusual Thanksgiving dishes. And these are all, I love Matt, kind of surprises me. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting into this at the same time that you guys are. All right. So uh, we have a list of 10 here, but you probably don't have time to get through all of them. But okay. one of the biggest ones for me was bologna cake. That is, is that frosting? Yes. Is there an ingredient list on that? What? Oh, so it's, it's like, bologna. It's layers of bologna. It's frosting, and it's like. And there's guys on the field. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not uh, looking and you're listening, it's what you think. It's slices of bologna, frosting. That looks like a chive cream cheese, but is it frosting? It's frosting. What's holding it up on the outside is hot dogs, and there's cheese whiz on top with pimento olives. Hey, that is the white trashiest. I don't know which trailer that came out of, but you ought to be arrested. And that means somebody was like, you know what? I think is probably the most unhealthy thing we can put together. Is 37 pieces bologna cake. God damn, there is a recipe. Oh, it was in Sweet Home Alabama? The movie? One pound of sliced bologna. <laughs> Two teaspoons grated onion. There it is. It is. It's cream cheese. Eight ounce of cream cheese. Okay, Worcestershire sauce and a package of Ritz crackers. I'll tell you, it's, and I know this is going to sound weird, it's less gross with the cream cheese. Than it is with frosting, but still, the it has three five star ratings. I I I'm more curious about who's giving it a five star rating than who is. That looks so bad, guys. Now the one with the hot dogs on the outside with the cheese whiz and the pimento olives that is you should be. That's some prison shit right there. Like that is prison Thanksgiving. Is that's what they're having with the toilet wine in the yard. Yeah, that is it right there. That to me like if somebody if somebody brought that over to the house, I would probably throw them out 
with the, and then I would, as they were walking out, I would throw that at their car. But beef bologna cake with hot dog towers and ranch dressing, mayonnaise, and easy cheese icing. So that is, that's ranch. I knew that wasn't frosting. That is ranch with mayonnaise and fucking cheese whiz. Dude, that is <laughs> like, if you were like, tell me you're white trash without telling me you're white trash, just show up somewhere with that fucking thing. <laughs> I would tell you for sure who's showing up with that. I would, the first thing I would say is, hey, please, when you come to my house, don't wear a sleeveless shirt because I know you're showing up with a sleeveless shirt if that is your. But what else? Like, what? I wonder what your other options were where you're like, no, 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 I want to make a good impression. By the way, just gave a Southern accent for that because I don't think anyone from Minnesota is showing up. You know what I mean? No, that, that for sure is a Southern accent. And I just gave one. I don't know. Minnesotans really like their mayonnaise. That's true. That's true. Okay. That's pretty gross, dude. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> that, I don't know how we're going to top that, but let's see what else we got. I think we can. What the fuck is that? Meat pick and pickles in see-through jello? Yes. So this is called a aspic adventure. And basically aspic is like a type of jello, gelatin. Yo, first of all, clear jello it gross. I don't like the texture of jello as it is. But a clear gelatin uh, is so fu I don't know why that's grosser, but things that I can see in the jello, oh, uh, no, no, no. But if I see meat and pickles in gelatin, because you, what that looks like is, you know, when you have turkey or chicken and you put it in the refrigerator overnight and it's got that, the fat gelatins up, that's what that looks like. Yeah. So in, in this picture, we have cubes of meat cheese and pickles. There's cheese in there? That's not double meat? No, that there's cheese in there. Dude, cheese and meat in jello is just a Dude, I take it back. Hey you bologna pies, bologna cakes, come over. Hey bologna cakes, can't wait to see you at Thanksgiving. You these people, the meat cheese pickle jello, go bury another body in your backyard. And while you're at it, jump in the hole. That you are not contributing anything to a civilized society. That is the thing. And thank for, thanks for garnishing it with a full tomato on the outside. Why is that? What is the garnish supposed to do? Are they dressing it up? That is an on to... Yo, dude, I'm glad they made it healthy and they put it on a couple pieces of kale. You fucking crazy. <laughs> that is so fucking bananas to me. I don't even know how to... Now, I will tell you something else, guys. I'm a dude who will try anything. So I'm trying your bologna cake, and I'm trying this monstrosity. Aspic adventure. I'm trying, an, I'm trying both of those. By the way, bologna cake was my nickname in high school. <laughs> but, like, I'm trying both. But as I'm swallowing them, I'm saying to you, get the fuck out of my house. Or I'll just leave wherever you and I are. Th but I can't abide by that. If somebody showed up to a barbecue with that, there would be a riot. This is, You're saying, hey, I think everybody's going to like this, is what you're saying. I want to contribute. Oh, did you, you brought burgers? Cool. Oh, did you, you, you made some potato salad? Cool. We all like that. Oh, did you bring an apple pie? Love that. Oh, did you either make or, or even stop by a restaurant and get some wings. Thank you. What did you bring? I brought meat, cheese, and pickles in jello. Oh, by the way, out of the jello, why are you bringing a meat, cheese, pickle concoction if it's not on a sandwich? Meat, cheese, pickle on a sandwich. I'm on board. I'm on board. But if it was like a meat, cheese, pickle salad, what are you fucking doing? But in a jello, oh, this is, by the way, both of these are pure stoner. It's like, what do I got in the fridge? I, now, I've been high and, and not had a whole lot of things in my fridge before where I've been like, you know, I'm down on my luck and I don't have a whole lot of dough because I, I, I've eaten a mayonnaise and almond sandwich before. 
because that was what was in the fridge. But I'm not bringing it over to somebody's house. I would just be like, hey, I don't have anything to bring. Uh, I, but not, hey, I don't have, I don't have much. But you know what I do have in my house? I got Jello, I got pickles, I got meat, and I got cheese. No, then stay home. You eat it. Oh, what else we got? So we got another Jello dish, but this time it is Coca Cola salad. And basically, the gelatin, it's gelatinized Coca Cola with stuff inside of it. Do you know what's in there? Um, I'm thinking like cranberries and pineapple and some other fruit stuff. Okay. So I could have been persuaded, honestly. Now, guys, I am not a Jello fan texture wise, but I, the idea of a sweet Coca Cola, no. Nah. <laughs> Just. What else we got besides this, Chad? This is not. All right. So a, uh, staying with the bologna theme, we have bologna mashed potato tacos. Again, this is somebody who's real high. Who's just got leftovers I've at that. I've never heard of anyone using bologna at Thanksgiving. N no, dude. You know why? Because it's, it's not right. By the way, <laughs> I, I grew up on bologna sandwiches, guys. My mom made me bologna sandwiches. And by the way, at that time, I think bologna was a health food. Bologna sandwich on white bread with mayonnaise, I think was considered a healthy sandwich when I was growing up. We know better now. That is pig asshole wrapped, like wrapping up potato. I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, here's what I'm going to be honest with you. I bet you that tastes okay. Because bologna, I'm being honest, a bologna sandwich, like I've had a fried bologna sandwich in Nashville. It's delicious. Now I wake up feeling like I licked a camel's butthole, you know, but I bet you that tastes okay, except get those peas out of my mashed potatoes. Why do people feel like they need to add something to something that's great? You know what doesn't need peas? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are pretty good. They're pretty good with the butter and the sour cream, garlic. They're pretty good. You know what they don't need? A fucking pea. Chocolate chip cookie, perfect dessert, perfect dessert. You know what doesn't need? A fucking nut, a walnut. No. Get your pea. That's, that's what gets me more about this. I honestly, I wouldn't want you to bring it to Thanksgiving, but at my house as a leftover that nobody else saw me see when I was high, if someone was like, you want one of these? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'll eat one of those. I think uh, part of this dish is dipping it in the gravy before you take a bite. Yeah, dude. Again, at my house, day after Thanksgiving, in my sweatpants, nobody else watching. I'll have a couple of those. But don't bring them over as a dish. That's not okay. Some things are okay at your house in your sweatpants, dude. The day after, you got gravy on your shirt. You're just like eating whatever the fuck is in the fridge. I get it. But don't bring that over as like, hey guys, guess what I brought this year? That there's two different, it's two different things. By the way, that jello dish doesn't belong either at your house or at somebody else's house. Same with the bologna cake. So have you ever had a turducken? Yeah, dude, delicious. So apparently there's a rising trend for something called a turpus. It sounds like an STD. Which is a turkey stuffed with an octopus. First of all, that looks so gross. That looks honestly like something that was left untreated and just grew. That is so fucking gross. I, there, you, there could not be two more different tastes than turkey and octopus. And not that different tastes don't belong together, but these two don't. And it really looks like a supervillain. <laughs> so you know what I mean it, I, I, I never understood the fusion of like seafood and turkey like, like with oyster stuffing or anything like you that. know what this looks like what was the Pirates of the Caribbean this is like Davy Jones <laughs> so you know what I mean with the fucking this is what this this the, is that Davy Jones was that yeah. who mm -hmm. this looks like somebody cooked Davy Jones this is what it looked like there is zero excuse for this and guys here's another thing I would say Food's great, man. And I think experimenting with food is great. But 
there's some lines you just don't need. You know what I tried? There's some lines you just don't need to cross. You notice I didn't give that dumb guy a Southern accent. This is not a Southern dish. This is, now, if there was like a possum coming out of there, I'd have been like, you know what I tried? But this is not, this is, this is unreasonable. I, and the scissors in the background, I hope they used it to stab themselves in the face. <laughs> this is not something that you, if I went to somebody's house and walked in, first of all, you're losing all credibility for yourself as a chef. Because now I know that you don't know things that are supposed to go together. And I don't have any faith that what you're going to be serving me is going to be even the least bit delicious. I'm out. So uh, Thanksgiving needs pies, right? Yeah. So we have two different pies that people seem to like, which is the pickled pumpkin pie. Okay. Now, I would definitely give that a try. I like sweet with a little tang. And I love pickles on things. Now, I would not have thought of this, and I don't want the pickle in the pie. But on top, and maybe the six on top is too much, but I would at least give that a bite. I don't, I would have never thought of it, but I'd, I'm intrigued. Well, what's interesting is that these particular pickles, you can tell uh, they're the sweet and sour chip. It's the sweet pickles that they put on top. Mm, I need tangy. I don't want any sweet. I don't need sweet pickle on top of the sweet. Just, just the the tangy one. Okay. All right. Now the last one. Save the best for last. This type of pie is called a colored green pie. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, fuck you. I mean, it, it looks like someone threw up spinach. In, no, in a fuck off. Pan. Pies are delicious and sweet and savory. They don't. That's then make it a chicken pot pie of some kind, but that is like, that's not, no, that's not, call it something else besides a pie. Pie is delicious that I eat after dinner for delicious. This looks like a bad quiche. It looks like, again, honestly, it looks like something you would eat at a vegan's house where they were like, I made a pie and you're like, fuck you and your kale collard green pie. That is a trick. To call that a pie. If somebody, honestly, if someone was in charge of desserts, Matt, and they were like, okay, hey, by the way, Matt's bringing dessert this year, and you showed up with that, there'd be a fight. I don't know if you consider that a dessert, though. That's more like a um, savory side dish. Cool. Let's call it something besides a pie. Let's call it, you know, collard green quiche. I mean, can you imagine going to a dinner that has that as one of the side dishes and the bologna uh, cake? I, there's no way those two mix and match. Whoever's bringing that isn't at the house with the bologna cake guy. <laughs> those two people don't talk. You think bologna cake guy is friends with the fucking collard green pie person? No way, dude. No way. Those people even live in the same hemisphere. There's no fucking way. No. I don't think those two cross paths. Now, bologna cake and turpus might intersect. Although I don't think Terpus is, ah, they're closer than this. This person isn't around either one of them. Mm. Ah, maybe Terpus and this guy. No, because this feels very vegany, Which is like probably the most annoying Thanksgiving of all time. I was a vegan for a while, everybody. And I annoyed the shit out of myself. Because all I could talk about was being vegan. It was so annoying. Were you raw vegan? Um, not on purpose. Was that you didn't cook anything? Yeah, raw veganism. Basically, you don't cook anything. No, I mean, I, I like I cooked sweet potatoes. So that's not raw vegan, right? No, if you cook anything, it's not. Raw. Yeah, then I wasn't raw vegan. But I was vegan for a while. And I'll tell you two things. I was hungry 24 hours a day. I ate nonstop. And while I was eating, I could not stop talking about how good it felt to be vegan. And at one point I was like, I'm annoying it myself. <laughs> so I'm going to stop this right now. Hey everybody, listen, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much to everybody who's coming out of the shows and who's watching the pod and listening to the pod. Jacob Wolf is back next week. 
Also next week, I am in Kansas City. Um, uh, week after that, I am. I have four shows, everybody. I start in Red Bank, New Jersey. I go to Wilmington, Delaware. I go to Newark, New Jersey, and I go to Easton, Pennsylvania. Those shows are going to be amazing. A small little theater tour of the East Coast. So come one, come all. going to be amazing. Um, after that, I am at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Oh, those shows always sell out. Kansas City always sells out. I don't know about the theater shows because I've never been to any of those cities, but I'm assuming those are going to sell out. And, um, and then I am uh, Houston, 26th, 27th, 28th, at a new club. I'm at the Punchline down there. And then New Year's Eve, Seattle. Jacob Wolf would be, will be with me at Mohegan Sun and in Houston. So make sure you come and check out those shows, everybody. Listen, thank you all so much for all the support. I uh, love you guys. I love the people who are on here and watching this podcast. Super dope group of people. I uh, love meeting you out at the shows. Thank you again for all your well wishes about Jacob Wolf. Um, and have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.